Hello and welcome to a special episode of the Foundry Roundtable here in Foundry Bonus Weekend. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing through a few Foundry missions, um, obviously getting ourselves some uh, bonus marks while we do it. We've got our usual cast of Mark Hawkman, hey. Andrew Boone, hey. and Hippie John. Hey, hey. And also with us is Sir Boulevard. Is my cloak offline? doesn't work in sector space that's very true <laughs> well guys i'm afraid that's all the time that i have for today uh, uh, some things i need to do before we play two missions done tonight yeah i'd play got, one got more. ourselves I'd, some mark i was gonna say i'd play you guys, one you guys can short, keep going if you want yeah i'd play one short federation to top it off we did a romulan uh a klingon and we could do one federation mission or we could do you know, one other, one other thing with someone from our chat room or whatever people want to do. All right, good night, All right, guys. Let's see. Good night, Dragon. Hey, Baz, you want to come on be our uh, fifth? Hey, yeah, there you go. We got we got Baz in the chat room. Baz, yeah. Baz Mataz. I'll go Baz, unlock the. Bazumson, Baz, awesome. However, that was would be pronounced. Baz some Baz Stout said. Um, I'll go unlock the armory, get him more knives. Oh, he doesn't need any more knives. Yep. Okay, I'm here. I just had to uh, mute the Yikes. channel because, um, yeah. Hello. Ba Baz, you're stabbing our ears. <laughs> Holy. Impressive volume. Impressive he's a, he's volume. He's a force Baz. in any sense. <laughs> Okay, what weapons is Miranda carrying? Is that better? Yeah. Oh, that's much better. Thanks, Baz. Have you guys ever done the Far Wanderer? I don't think I've even heard of it. Okay. That's one of that's one of his that I've done. Uh, I think you guys would let's do that one um it's estimated play time is 40 minutes uh, and one of the issues it suffers from it actually suffers from in solo play is the boff pathing problems ah. so something that wouldn't happen for us it's something that wouldn't happen for us and it's you did an aj stoner mission is it's not his best i don't think um, but his best, however, are longer. That's <laughs> what it comes down to. Yeah. His best are longer. Okay. So, um, uh, it's, it's called The Far Wander. Author's name is simply A.J. Stoner with no, uh, with, with no breaks in it at all. Can't believe I'm going to take the mayhem on this mission. That's kind of kooky. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I'm sitting on Earth space dock. I'm um, trying see. to remember where this one starts. The Utara Nebula. Yeah, we're going to Fork Space. Yeah, we're going yep. way out of there. Uh, don't worry about my, yep. my ship. Is do you want me to? Uh, do you want me to go ahead and read the mission intro here that we all accept? Uh, uh, yes, everybody, please. go ahead and accept, and uh, I'll just re-grab it when. Uh... Okay, but I'll go, do you want me to go ahead and read it? Yeah, I guess go ahead and read it. Uh, Fleet Command has ordered us to the Mutara Nebula in Gamma, in Gamma Orionis. It seems a massive ship of unknown origin has appeared. In initial reports say it appears to have suffered heavy damage and is repairing itself with materials gathered from a nearby asteroid field. All attempts at communication have thus far met with failure. Go to the Mutara Nebula in the Gamma Orionis sector block. I'm heading up to the mayhem and then heading to the transwarp gate. And I'll see you guys I out there. I'm about to transwarp to right though. I love how you have Can... uh, mayhem on the mayhem with the mayhems. Isn't it great? <laughs> <laughs> 
I love that her ship is terrifyingly pink and purple. Yes, what better all the better to stand out with. Uh huh. Black stars are meant to be seen. And heard. I just wish that we had a way to inject like rock star, you know, sound bites into the game. That'd be awesome. Well, you said you do or don't have the guitar emote. I don't. I wish I uh, did. I wish I've got that. the air guitar remote. Uh, emote. I wish I had that. I wish they would bring back those emote packs. I don't know why they took them off. Makes they weren't no selling. Well, right. no. Uh, it, it, it's one of those things that it, it's like the um, costume packs that people didn't like. There's no reason to withdraw them. You just leave them there and quit making more. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the I mean, thing, like, even the costume packs, at least, they came back in some form. But yeah. as far as the emotes, they've not been available since they were taken down. Oh, period. Give, give them away for, for a uh, social event or something. Yeah, exactly. Maybe next uh, they could. summer event would make, be pretty good. That'd be, that'd be kind of fun, give a couple of them away at, like, the summer event. Be a good idea, too. Haha, <laughs> Brendan thinks he can outrun my ship. Like no. they never got rid of uh, they never got rid of those emote packs and champions. I I don't imagine they sold any better there. They just they sit there and occasionally I'm sure someone buys them. Mm -hmm. Hey, I pa I must have passed Starbuck. Right here. No, you're still in serious. Everyone else is already at the guitar and Nebula. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I saw a Starbuck in front of me, though. There wasn't another a... Chimera? No, it said Starbuck. Yeah, are you sure it was the right Starbuck, though? There are lots of Starbucks. Lots of Shepherds, Common too. Name. We pretty much well, like rabbits. Also, remember, Starbuck is a pop culture reference. Which is funny, because I... Battlestar Galactica. Yep. The original character this is based off of, though, I made up well before I ever heard of Battlestar Galactica. Starbuck is actually a real name. Real yeah, it name. is. Well, I mean, you know, the, the restaurants are not named after the Battlestar Galactica character. No, they're named after um, the character from Moby Dick. Yep. You know, I've always found it amusing that that ship that Baz is flying has the deflector on the back. God, my oh, ship, is... <laughs> ship is so horrid. I love the Steam Runner. Yeah. I... Steam Runner, if I remember correctly, is like the uh, the new version of the Miranda. <laughs> I like yeah. the Steam uh, Runner. not sure if it's Miranda or um... what was that other ship? The Oberth? No... Well, what was the what was the NX Zero One class? The NX this, class. Yeah. That that NX wasn't the class name. Is that what what what, what was the class name of the NX Zero One? It was the NX, the yeah. NX class. Yeah. Yeah. It would. It had no class name. It was just the NX class. The when they refitted it, it became Columbia class because they lost the Columbia. <laughs> but the original. And make no, it here. Yeah, but the no no secondary hole one is the NX. See, right there, that's the kind of thing I love when I arrive at the door. Begin the mission? Begin the mission title. That's really all the door needs to be. <laughs> uh, of course, I, I, I'm wondering uh, why this person named Space Seraph is here, because um, the Mutari Nebula, as far as I know, is not actually used in-game. It was supposed to be. It was supposed to be the site for the uh, Children of Khan SDF. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, Which I am... Oh, never mind. So are we ready uh, to go I in, or are we I, on... I, uh... Yeah, I think we're ready. Who's ready. our yep. mission leader? Double check. Are we on normal, on uh, whatever? Good point. We're on normal. Just, just, yeah. just look uh... to the left for the uh, number of tick marks at the top of the team bar. Yep, oh, there we go. Okay, so that would be Dragoon, yeah, you're in the I'm lead. Good. And I'm going to change one thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Those are annoying. I, I forgot to mention that earlier. 
Yeah. Now, <laughs> now you won't have to deal with them. Okay. Okay, let's go. Captain, we have arrived at the Mutara Nebula. Sensors indicate that our mystery ship is still here. In mission. I'm actually kind of sad because they've pulled um, some of the Mutara Nebula assets from the foundry. If uh, people in the chat room have never uh, played one of AG, AJ Stoner's missions, uh, he does good work. He's in. Uh, he's an old friend of mine. He does really, really, really good work. Um, I, was gonna say, didn't he I say old. It's, I say old friend. He's someone I know from in game. You know, who happens to, in my opinion, be a very creative Foundry author who's done some of the highest rated stuff out there. Is he still around? So, yeah. Okay. He still mm. plays. He doesn't really do much authoring anymore, as far as I know. Um, well, authoring he's just is really kind of, of a thing you have to be passionate for. It's, it, he's one of those people who, a lot like uh, some other authors, um, he's just getting more and more frustrated with the fact that other things in the game get, you know, get basically get, you know, get some kind of love. They get, you know, they get new assets. They get new, they get worked on on them. And ours, ours do not, you know, the foundry we get to, we have what we have. But, you know, as I said, once upon a time is how is that different than yesterday? So, um, oh, these are the lyrics of a song. Uh, these are the lyrics of uh, something from uh, Britain in the 6th century. Um, yeah, I I, I, I'm just wondering who Wid this is. <clears throat> I assume it's a title. Yeah, uh, the title Wid Sith, the Far Wanderer. The weary in spirit cannot withstand fate. A troubled mind finds no relief, wherefore those eager for glory often hold some ache imprisoned in their hearts. Thus I had to bind feelings in fetters, often set at heart, cut off from my country. Where has the horse gone? Where the man? Where is the giver of gold and gifts? Where is the feasting, the mead hall, the pleasures? I mourn the gleaming cup, the glory of the prince. This is circa the 6th century. We've arrived at the ninth planet, Captain. I'm showing a large amount of debris. Captain, the alien ship is under attack by the Borg. Dun dun dun. Get <laughs> alert, battle stations, and prepare to engage tactical fusion queue because this is going to suck. Oh, it's not going to be that bad. We're on normal, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, um, I'm going to show you what the puzzle ape can do. All right. Times four times. Five and have that, and then up here. Did I mention this is my character for fighting board? No, I, but I, that seems to be readily apparent. This, yeah, this character too. fights board a lot, but I, I didn't really custom build her loadout for it. I think pretty much everyone's built at next level now is, will this also work on Borg? Well, yeah. in, in, in space, they as long as you have hazard emitters, you don't need to worry about the Borg. I mean, that's the only the, thing special. It's the Borg were the endgame enemy once upon a time, and then things got tougher, so they're not as hard anymore. Mm -hmm. Which, I'm hoping that the revamp of the story they're doing right now We'll do it. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll change the Undyne, not really the Borg. Well, we'll, well the see. Borg arc got pulled too. You know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Enemies destroyed, Captain. Looks like the alien vessel did m most of the brunt work before we showed up. Protecting the wreckage of at least three cubes and five spheres littering the surrounding area. That's what <laughs> less than we did. All clear, no hostiles in range. Bring us, Bring us in. in. Ooh, this is cool. Yeah, what we—that is, 
Random he things. built a ship out of asteroids, and uh, that's the alien ship Station, down there. Yeah, stations and, and everything. Uh-huh. It's like that's... almost like a massive uh, bird of prey-ish. Uh-huh. <laughs> it looks exactly like what the Klingons would build. Yep. Except I'm gonna have right a look at the engines. Thing. This is an utterly massive ship, nearly four kilometers long, and mm. massing Pretty just under hard. 20 million tons. That, that sounds like a lowball number. Mm. Eh, whatever. Hell. Uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm about like 13, 15 k's away from you, and I'm near the engines. Yeah. I'm... Alright, anybody want to read? That... This is the Federation Starship USS Rachel B. Please respond. Repeat, this is the Federation Starship USS Rachel B. Please respond. Nothing, Vice Admiral. Either their communications are down or, or they're not interested in chatting. There may, there be... may be... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> there may be no one home. According to sensors, this craft is close to half a million years old. It seems to have the ability to perform self-maintenance, but the crew may be long dead. Not You're not picking, picking up, any, up any, any last signs at all? Nothing that we can detect with our scanners, but our scanners seem to be unable to penetrate the hole to any appreciable degree. There's no way to be to say for certain. I suggest moving closer and conducting a detailed scan of the vessel. Agreed. Hmm. I, I, th I think this is the, the wrong version of the word Q. Ah, oh, whatever. <clears throat> The ship's command section appears intact and operational, if unoccupied. Life support is functional but inactive. Given the interior temperature, this section has likely been unoccupied for some time. I'm Scan guessing the my reason underneath. I got it. This appears to me more than a simple deflector array. I believe these devices allow the ship to open a gateway to subspace. Like a conduit system the Borg use? Similar, but not exactly. The Borg's ability to traverse subspace is limited to a prefabricated series of tunnels that link specific destinations. Most likely, this is the relic of some previous assimilated species. I do not believe this vessel is so restricted. It may be able to plot courses through subspace and arrive at nearly any destination it wishes. Oh, good. They got Incredible. hyperdrive. Mmm. <laughs> Incredible. Grand impulse drive. The ship's impulse drive all appears to be intact and operational. There appear to be many to make use of externally advanced ion drive that incorporates a spatial compression system to overcome the problems of particle choking in the reaction chamber. There are numerous advantages to such a system. Few moving parts, relatively low power consumption, and negligible reaction mass needed. I would guess this ship could accelerate at 100 g-forces or more if pushed to its limits, maintaining almost, maintaining it almost indefinitely. Drive reactor. I got it. These appear to be dedicated impulse drive reactors. There are eight of them in total. At maximum, each could put out more power than a galaxy-class starship. This is truly amazing technology. Put it mildly, I see why the Borg were so keen to acquire her. I'm scanning the shield emitter. These appear to be generous for ship's defensive screens as well as its structural integrity field and inertial dampers, all of which seem to work as a single integrated system. They have been heavily damaged, and these systems all appear to be down at the moment. Hey, everyone, slow down just a little bit. Everybody is starting to speed up a lot with what we're reading. So, just I, I, I'm doing it, I felt myself doing it, and I've heard two other people doing it, so we all have to slow down a little. Okay. <laughs> Disabling these arrays would go a long way to hobbling this ship. Most certainly. The Borg would seem to agree as well, as they've been concentrating their fire here. Please alert Task Force Omega that we need backup. Aye, Captain. 
Let's move on. Yeah, I like the uh, the the Task Force Omega reference. Mm. They're out there in the universe. They're out there in the same sector. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're not really all that far away. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, this is scanning the weapons. If you have been impressed so far, Captain, prepare yourself. These arrays appear to be massive gamma ray projectors. I thought it was impossible to focus the gam focus gamma rays. For us, it most certainly is. It appears that whoever built this ship was not so limited. What kind of power output are we talking about? At maximum potential, their yield would be at least an order of magnitude greater than anything Starfleet possesses. Each of these weapons possess more firepower than any four ships in the fleet. A tractor beam. These seem to be the vessel's tractor beam emitters. The survey craft that first observed this ship reported seeing it use these to move asteroids at high speed before it, before it pulverized them and separated out the materials used for repair or it wanted for repairs. So they can be used as manipulators as well? It appears so, and with a very high degree of precision. Please keep, Please an eye keep on him. Mean <laughs> <laughs> reactor. I like the look of this ship a lot. So do yeah. I. A lot of cool work done hanging this thing in space. <laughs> This would appear to be the ship's main reactor. It is a massive matter-antimatter generator. There are no sign of any fusion reactors present on the vessel. It is currently powered down, but I would estimate it could potentially generate as much energy as the eight reaction react eight drive reactors combined. Doubtless, this kind of power output is required to operate the subspace drive. Where, where is it drawing power from now? The systems that are currently online appear to be operating off of a mixture of batteries and small local reactors spread throughout the ship. Let's move on to the material analysis. I think it's uh, asteroids and satellites, that's what I think. <laughs> Probably, let's scan the hull to make sure. The hull is comprised of an alloy close to Dor Doralloy infused with neutrinium at 830 particles per cubic centimeter with lithium and tungsten used as the primary reaction shielding at 96 particles per cubic centimeter. There are 10 layers, each made of two plates, three centimeters thick, surrounding two piles of polymerized protein similar to spider silk but much stronger, and a central mess of carbon nanotubing. Each layer is separated from the next by a 10 millimeter gap kept in vacuum. This would allow energy penetrating the to spread out and dissipate before affecting the next surface. Formidable. Scan asteroid hull section. The asteroid sections are mainly comprised of nickel, iron, and rock, though they are surprisingly dense and heavily infused with both dilithium and deuterium. In an emergency, the vessel could doubtless cannibalize small amounts to make repairs and utilize these materials as fuel. It appears as though this has been done on more than one occasion. Small sections appear to have been neatly sheared off at a number of locations. Let's examine the damage direction. Why Sir, about? the damage to this area of the ship appears to be quite recent, but not entirely the result of this engagement. I say the ship has been under fire from the Borg on at least three occasions over the last 60 days. They've been hunting her? Not good. To understate it, if the Borg managed to assimilate this kind of a technology, it would give them just the advantage they need to finally overwhelm the Alpha Quadrant once and for all. Well, they need to make certain that doesn't happen. What do you propose, sir? If we expedite its repairs, it may move on. I'll start putting an engineering team together right away. Do so. To 
since the vessel is repairing itself from surrounding materials, it would be helpful if we called in Tug Craft to tractor useful materials closer to the ship to speed things along. An excellent suggestion. Contact Sleep Command. Most of the areas we'll need access are still depressurized or frigid cold. I suggest sending an advanced team over to get things ready for the repair crews. I intend to lead that team by myself. I knew you were going to say that, too. Please be careful, Captain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I joined Starfleet in the first place. Yes, mother. <laughs> <laughs> Baz even has on his secret outfit. Yeah. For depressurized things. Uh, this, yeah, this is my um, Omega Borg outfit, so I should probably get into out in in into gear since there. And I, I I still have I on my it. elf outfit from the uh, Christmas event. <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> uh, I've got a brown coat that I can put on. I'm just okay. gonna. Uh, I I'm gonna either keep on my minor outfit or put on my. My purple normal suit. I might put uh, on my uh, eBay too. I like my Han Solo gear though, so I'll probably <laughs> keep this on. I I'm with my uh, Ferengi character. I'm gonna see if I could get the uh, Dyson outfit on her. See how that works. Looks. Dyson feet on a Ferengi character. That is an interesting. <laughs> This has been this has been a fun celebration of the Foundry bonus weekend. Um, I have to say, I've I've had fun playing three missions with people. Um, I love seeing what this, the upscaling on missions does sometimes. You know, one thing I'd like, I would really like, is to have some of the fleet or reputation costumes added to the. Yeah. Uh, so the the these maps are some of my favorite maps I've ever encountered in the Foundry. They were made, remember, a long time ago before we had transporters and stuff. So. Yeah. Well, this is definitely a mass transporter, like transporting like a um, an army almost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really. What's been going on before? <clears throat> Ship to away team. We've placed you down in what appears to be a transporter room near the outer hull in the central area on the ship. We're here. We're here. That would that would that would appear to be correct. Be advised, we will likely lose communications with you once your party leaves this area. Understood. Understood. First thing we should do is check on the alien transporters. We'll need to make use of them to get our people aboard. They were beyond the outermost sections. Okay, I'm on it. Oh, and you really are. Look at you already over there, Baz. <laughs> <laughs> well, he noticed the console was glowing. Everything. Yeah, appears... the console was glowing, so I was patient. Everything appears to be functional. Fascinating. So clearly more refined than our own transporter. The basic technology is much the same. Captain, would you mind trying a shut that you shunt power to this console? The power could serve some could serve the power control servers should be over there. There. <laughs> Just didn't Will do. Uh where's well, over there? Okay, it's over that direction. I'm just noticing some assets I haven't seen before, so hey, learning. Which one? Such as, such as, like this weird half console thingy. Uh, on it's the one wall. of the auction consoles. Oh, that's that, that's the back of one of the science consoles. Oh. Yep. Yeah, the person who built this map used several objects in ways that they were never meant to be used. Uh huh. And this, it works. When, once you get to some other areas, oh wow, this map. I'm just gonna put on my my Sunday best and go through this map. <laughs> Why do you mysteriously breathe vacuum? It's not a vacuum, is it? Yeah. No. Yeah. 
this part isn't, but um, there's uh, another part that is. Yeah. Oh. All right, then we should be in business. Once we have the habitat areas ready, we can start bringing over the repair queue. Wait, okay. team, the bridge. Moving on, moving on to power control, and we will be out of contact. We'll Understood. report back. In, we'll report back in two hours. Run away. How, how many engineers do we have? Two engineers. What? Two techs and a science. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good mix. I, I like these. I like these purple things. They they, they make really nice vases. Yeah. They're, they're actually an undine prop. Really. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. What they're meant to be used for, I have absolutely no idea. Whoa, oh, redress I forgot Cardassian about interior. this hallway. Oh this my is god. The Cardassian interior. I forgot about this hallway. I and forgot about some of the up. things he did. Now, this is impressive. This explains why we failed to detect any fusion reactors aboard. Even local power is generated by antimatter. We need more information before we start playing around with this thing. Yeah, um, antimatter is not fun at the best of times. I'm a tactical, and even I know that. That looks like the reactor control room back there. Go have a look. And yet, one of the Enterprise oh. D engineers got drunk and pulled all the chips out for the antimatter this, reactor. This engine. Oh, he's not uh, the engineer was, anymore. Uh... <laughs> Someone else go over and take care of that. I want to look around the engine room for a while. This should be the place. Let's see what we can, we're dealing with here. <laughs> Let's see if we can download tech some technical schematics. schematics. Okay. Um, I'm just going to say this is now my favorite map in the foundry. Yeah, ever. this is impressive. This is this. There's still other parts to get to. Oh, this is the the Bull Queen. Um, yep. Throne. It's the it's it's one oh. part of the throne used with something else that's not Borg at all. I thought I was doing cool. well with my deflect control. This is impressive. Uh, that, that well, I'm not sure what what it is. is the, 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 the other object is a Romulan console. Yeah, there there you go. And so our uh, power control oh, yeah. database it, it, yeah, it must is... be a, a Romulan generator. Uh, it's back it's, it's to the a... other side. <sighs> yeah, that's a Romulan I went to the wrong side to get in there. You know what it is? I, I, I think I know what it is that I like about this mission, even though some of the text at the beginning is very long and science-y. It's, it's broken up well enough. Um, but, but I, I think what I like about this mission is it feels very explorey. If that, yeah, like, yeah. if that, like, I feel like I'm actually exploring something at this point. Here's the database for power control. I, I managed to find a way to crawl inside the antimatter reactor. <laughs> How is it in there? All right, this appears to be a pretty straightforward operation. Uh, walk everybody through steps they're going to need to perform. Let's get things underway. The clock is ticking. First, First thing we need to do is the full-scale system, system diagnostic. The controls, controls are upstairs. I'll take care of it. Here, uh, come look at what I was talking about quick, though. So. You watch. You jump up here, and and you you go down here, and and then you can. If you walk around the back of this purple tube thing, then then, then you, you can jump up and out the other side. <laughs> and this is why we keep Mark around. <laughs> oh, I can see you. And, and, and I'm, I'm not even playing a Cation. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Oh. Good scanning. All right, Captain. I, I... the... Restart diagnostic is running. You need to I'm run a stuck system in something. Page. This will prevent an imbalance from occurring in the reaction chamber. The control Goals should wrong. be set at the far end of the room. On my way. Oh wow! Now I'm getting some lag from these particle effects. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The, 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 the giant Romulan console is it. Oh, that is a lot of scanning beams. 
can only see the one from my perch. Alright, the diagnostic field is complete. All systems appear to be nominal. System purge initiated. As you do it, we're ready to power up the reactor. Confirmed. We now talk to the Romulan crate. <laughs> <laughs> now talk to the Romulan crates. <laughs> I love the foundry. <laughs> Complete the reaction chamber purge. Check. Chamber clear. Charge the magnetic bottle. Magnetic bottle charged. <laughs> Think the matter injector. Matter injector synchronized. Think the antimatter injector. AM injector synchronized. I'm the coolant pumps. I'm showing a failure on the pumps. I'll check it out. I'm guessing that's the red glowy thing. No, you engineers go check it out. I'll keep an eye on yeah, you. Yeah, I'm gonna oh, come oh, hang out. Mind. I'm it's, gonna it's come hang out over here with the zag. <laughs> I'll send in a way to actual uh, level of stabbings. <laughs> it appears there's a secondary manual safety lock on the unit itself. I'll take care of it. Disengage safety and watch the thing. It involves my head beating into the reactor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> that seems to have cleared up the trouble, Captain. I need you to check on the flow capacitors and then begin the infusion process. Ooh, are the... these uh, engine thingies are now rotating? I didn't notice them rotating before. Right, that's new. Yeah, I think. No, no, oh, the, they, were need... be... they were rotating. They were rotating before. Okay, I had to pay attention to those. It's possible that we just didn't notice. Bad I, I, just I mean, if you if you use the individual off. parts um, and build it individually, they won't rotate. But if you uh, use the completed version, they do rotate. Yep. Ooh, the, the capacitors uh, got replaced whenever I uh, poked them. Uh, originally, they they were a version that didn't have the green glowy effect, and and, and then they uh, got replaced by a version that did. All right, everything should be ready now. Please proceed to number two reaction control console. We need to activate both controls simultaneously. Back. Back. This way. Control. No, no, wait. I'm going to be... Uh, ha, ha. Reaction control. Reactor operating within normal parameters. I'm with... Okay, wow. that's a little scary. I forgot to tell you, don't look directly at the chamber or you'll go blind. Okay. Excuse me? <laughs> I recommend closing the shutters okay, on the reactor. Okay, this is a little scary. Aren't we funny? Let's move on. Still funny to do. Well, f f fortunately for me, that this character uh, does is technically blind anyway, so... You need to access the habitat control station. If I'm reading the schematic correctly, there should be one adjoining a hyperponics lab close to here. Quickly, people. Anyway. Back. I like these hallways a great deal. I'm petting a tribble. Run faster. Whoa, you petted a tribble. Okay. Okay. Advance to the hydroponics lab. To the hydroponics lab. Next hydroponics, hydroponics. Ah, Nick's height. <laughs> I have got to say that map was better than I imagined it would be and I had my imagination going at full non-foundry strength wait wait till you get to the hydroponics lab that was my favorite part of this whole this whole mission when I played it like over a year ago now it's been over a year since I played this so I'm re-exploring what, what it was I liked about it and a lot of it is the maps but I do remember the hydroponics lab being the highlight of this thing Oh boy. <laughs> he he did such a great job with these maps. Why do I see this hydroponics lab evolving like waterfalls everywhere and <laughs> no, it's Yeah, you can't do that. It's just multi level, I think. It's a, if I recall, it's just a very, very well done multi level. There map. are some interior yeah, maps multi that do involve waterfalls, but they also have baked in um, annoying machinery that you can't really disguise to make it look like a hydroponic lab. Mm -hmm. one, one, one of the Bajoran interiors. Oh, look, we're shaking. This must be the right it's, place. 
All this racket should be the air processors. Passage to our right leads to the hydroponic style. There should be a habitat control station at the far end, directly below us. Why can't I move? Ah! No! This is amazing. We should scan some of this plant life and record what we can. I've never seen vegetation like this. I'm stuck. Oh my uh, god. I don't see any. Oh, here we go. I can see it now. Uh, they're just trees. I've seen them free before. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Baz, you're hilarious. They're just trees. <laughs> I've seen a tree before. <laughs> it's the way this lab is put together. Um, I, I remember liking this a lot, and I can see why. They're just yeah, trees. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. They're just trees. I've seen a tree before, Baz says. Now, at the other end... More stairs. I'm trying to remember what asset uh, it is. I'm not a botanist or anything, I'm, I'm just a... What are these? Just... Wait, Baz's answer to what are these things? Oh, they're, they're just bad. trees. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's... Oh, that's... I remember, that's why I like it. Because from down here, you can look up and see the windows you just ran past. Yeah, that's this is such a well put together map. They're pruning tools for maintaining the plants here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Never I'll... mind me to offend the gardeners. <laughs> They're lepers! <laughs> They're lepers! Well, looks like we got some exposed edges there. Over where? Oh, uh, the underside of the Borg uh, crops. Oh yeah. I wish they would fix the fix the ground scanner animation. Yep. What's wrong with the ground scanner and, animation? Uh, Trade quarter shows up at the end. Yeah. Amazing, truly amazing. Many of these plants aren't distinctly plants at all. Several of them share several animal genetic traits. Are any of them? Oh, they're, they're uh, cannibal plants. Get me out of here! Get me out of here! None of these plants are more dangerous than bass. <laughs> uh, I, I am stuck somewhere. I have no idea where I am. <laughs> it's because of the, the dialogue window being up. I'm like, I feel like I'm stuck with cannibal plants. <laughs> it doesn't appear so. A few are, a few are capable of some movement, and there are one or two carnivorous species here, but they shouldn't be a threat to anything our size. Good to know. Yeah, I don't wait. believe him. Wait, no one move. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> I got the Check contact. Your Check your tricorder. This entire chamber is swarming with trillions of nanobots. <laughs> Shields to the max maximum. <laughs> oh, man. What were we thinking? And think? I'm still stuck. Have we been contaminated? And have we been contaminated? Doesn't Can look like it. We appear to be safe. We seem to be repulsed by our body's natural magnetic fields. They are likely here to tend to the flora. Or, or, or it could be that they were created by a, a species that has a different uh, bioelectric aura. Let's get to environmental controls. Yeah, no, uh, up here. Uh, went out. Hey, when are you science guy? Come up here. That would be Mark. <laughs> I'm still stuck. Wait. Where? <laughs> the beam in point. You beamed into a wall? Well, I'm stuck inside a Borg, uh, whatever thingy. It's not a Mark. console. It, it's that converter thingy from the Cure mission. You can or see the, the uh... Kittimer Ford Ground, one of the two. Yeah. Okay, I'll do it then. We need to set the atmospheric tall assist for the command section of the ship so we can access it safely. Primary gas, nitrogen, 75%. Secondary gas, oxygen, 20%. Tertiary gas, argon. Uh, nah. 
Yeah, argon. Let's put five percent argon into our atmosphere. Yeah, because argon is it's, um is a stable uh what's it called a noble it's, gas. It's, yeah, yeah, did you see the other two options? Did you see the other two options on it though? Chlorine. Chlorine and yeah. Chlorine. Fluoride. Fluoride. or chlorine, yeah. Uh, yeah those argon. Yeah, argon's gonna be the right choice. Ar argon uh, the, the only way uh, breathing argon is going to hurt you is if you're not breathing oxygen. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> that should do it, Captain. Now we need to find the temperature controls. We have to find the mag car to the command section. Oh, so this will be a map <laughs> oh, transition, man. Mark. Yay! I, I'll be able to move again. Uh, on the other side of the map. Nope. I'm trying to remember what acid did he use for the stairs. Uh, I think it might... Oh. Shelves of some kind. Yeah, those are those, those are. Yeah, shelves. I think you used uh, shelves. I yeah. would love to give you a guess, but I can't see it from here. Yeah, it's it's those store shelves. See, see, the, the, the steps next to spawn point. That's actually one of the Cardassian console props. Um, yeah, mag oh. car to the command section. I'm kind yeah, of seeing the right. map that there's a built-in hallway you have to go through. This is... Maybe we have to go the other way. Because there was a... There was a yeah, key. Go uh, back. I, I'm just showing the, the, the yellow shit. circle is like all the way on the far side of the map from where I am. Yeah. Alright. I, so I think we have there. to go back to the start. Yeah. Rush is up there and I couldn't find anything. Well, there was a T when we first uh, came in. Yeah, I went to the other side of the T. There was nothing there. And it's on the wrong side of the map. Uh, yeah, they're... Yeah, it doesn't open. I'm sorry. Rawr! <laughs> Wait, no, it can't be this hard. I, 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 there was nothing in it that was this hard last time. Uh, oh my goodness, help. Mark! The worst thing I'm ever stuck. has happened to you! I'm stuck. Okay, I'm gonna go... I think there's gotta be something in the wall that yeah. we missed. Yeah, he ah, built it's gonna... something and it's neat. It's a mag car! How did we miss a mag car? I have to find the mag car so I don't feel insane anymore. Okay, yeah, it's... Oh, there's uh, the here door! Yep. Yeah. Yep, very cleverly hidden door. <laughs> Where? No, we, we, just, we just can't see anything. All right, everyone, we need to go to the optometrist. We all need new glasses. <laughs> it's around, right? Yeah. Oh, wow, this is cool. Nice use of the Bajoran doorway. Hey, please door. advance yet. Not now. I, I need to see this door. All right, maybe I can get there in 59 seconds. Yeah. Well, oh, there it is. Seven, ten, nine. Nine, eight, seven, <laughs> 14, 13, 12, 11. <laughs> that was well done. I like that door. Hydroponics was cool. Yeah, we're we're all blind for not seeing that door. <laughs> it, it was pretty bold as it, it was bold as it could be. <laughs> and it was so unless you're directly in front of it, you can't see it. Yeah, that's that's why. We still have a viewer. Hey, Kirk Fat Shelves. <laughs> this mission is called The Far Wanderer. It's by AJ Stoner. Um, hey, Johnny Snowball. We still have a couple of viewers, apparently. Yay. Uh, hey, according, guys. According to the stream, we have six. Well, we are part of those six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. So I, I, I'm not one of them. I didn't actually open the Twitch TV. So maybe we have three. Maybe we have three viewers at this point. So, uh, it, at least Kirk Fat and uh, Johnny Snowball um, yep. are enjoying Absolutely. This. Hey, guys. Hey, I. Uh, th this is an old favorite mission of mine. Yeah. Pretty good for an old mission. Yeah, this is, yeah. This is great for a new mission, even. This appears to be some kind of hibernation system. I'm guessing these are our hosts inside. They look they humanoid, look humanoid but there's no way to make out any detail. 
I don't know how it's possible, Captain, but these chambers have been active for at least tens of thousands of years, and yet they are still keeping their occupants alive. Incredible. How can that be possible? If I wasn't looking right at it, I'd tell you it's not. They might come out periodically, and there's no way, no telling how long-lived they are to start with. Though they are still alive, I doubt that any of them could be revived. They've just been in there too long. Could we open one and see? No, I won't, won't <laughs> risk killing any of them. <laughs> I love that someone else took the, can I do the risky thing? <laughs> <laughs> I want to do the risky thing. <laughs> oh, Captain, you get to have so much fun. The Captain is right. We are guests here and uninvited ones at that. Besides, there's no telling how the ship may react if we do anything to harm its charges. How do I get out of this maze? It looks like there's a stairwell on the back side of this chamber on the left side. I guess, I guess we, we head, head up. up in. I would suggest getting whatever readings we can while we're here. Even a cursory understanding of how the system functions could greatly advance our own stasis technology. Of course. Of course. Scans, I, I like scans. the way they, uh, they combined the Deferi and Borg assets together. Yeah, well, yeah. they combined the pod... Um... The, the pod assets and the Borg assets. These I are like really them. nicely done. With the... Oh, with the... On top of it all, I realize part of the reason I'm loving it so much. Um, and Dragoon, if if you can catch just a, an image of what I'm talking about just real quick. For, it's the color combination. It's the white underneath the green-yellow connected to that blue up top. All of those colors work really well together, and they're all bright and fun. It's yeah. definitely a very visually stimulating combination. Yeah, that it that is gray as the rest of it yeah. is. This combination really is appealing to me. And, and and it has those Klingon wall things that are that deep red color. And more yep. the shelves for stairs. Shelf stairs. I love shelf stairs, man. I, I want do. real stairs. Yeah, they're, they're oh, the, I uh, love the glass this. cabinet shelves. Um, I love this multi-layer map. I, yay, I, you're I, supposed to go all the way up? Found it, I think. No, wait, that, that's where we came from. I did. This appears to be the control room that oversees the hibernation chambers in the adjoining room. There may be hundreds of such chambers on board. Mm -hmm. Collect what data but, you can. By, by, by the way, these, these red notches in the walls, you can fall through them. Yep. Sweet. I like that. <laughs> oh, I found it's a like glitch. Slides. Hey, hey, hippie, can you come over here and, and look at this? Find the problem. I have to figure out how to get up top. Uh, you just took the stairs. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I gotta find the stairs again. I didn't go back, all the way back up. Back left hand side. Yep, I got them. I I ran up. I ran up. I I ran up. Say, this was it has a one-sided prop and, he, and it doesn't have two of them for each side. This must be the bay where they would bring individuals in and out of hibernation. Oh, nice. Are those oh, tubes? they're just misaligned, Mark. They're, just, they're misaligned. He, well, you're well right. it's just supposed to have one on each side. Well, no, if, he, if you look here, he misaligned it. There is one on each side, they're just misaligned. Hmm. It happens. Perhaps, but they don't appear to be disassembled at all. They may also be spares that they can get into service quickly. Hmm. And, and here's them. another one of the board converter gizmos. Yeah, combined with uh, one of with the uh, the prop underneath it though is the uh, the holographic emitter for the uh, Cardassian Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. Is fascinating. There appears to be an extensive turbolift system dedicated to the stasis chambers. They could bring any unit to more than 300 different locations throughout the ship. In what kind what of time? time? Seconds. There seem to be scores of different protocols regarding which and how many to bring to each location in various situations. It seems inactive now. Making it seem more likely that they are indeed beyond reviving. The ship may be nothing more than the most extravagant 
mausoleum in the galaxy. You may yet unravel the mystery? Yeah. Yeah. And there we go, we end. Sometimes I like... <laughs> Scan mad... Did this say mad table or med? Mad table. Mad. Okay, uh, I, need, I need glasses then. Well, I do need <laughs> glasses, but anyway. Looks to be a pretty standard diagnostic table. No surgical apparatus. No surgical apparatus of any kind. Uh, very sophisticated scanning technology, though. I'd better do a detailed inspection for the doctor. That must be an awkward thing to have if you bring your doctor on this away mission. What if you are the doctor? Dum bum bum bum. Go ahead and look at the, the console. Yeah, I like it's the two options there. The these things aren't hibernation chambers at all. They're not in stasis. They're being drawn. Hmm. Anything interesting, Captain? Let's not jump to conclusions. It's a bore. It would indeed be rest to make such assumptions. In any event, these works are a little different. Uh, these work a little differently than their bulk counterparts. The Borg simply use this technology to mature and repair their organic components. These things are growing, growing entirely mature life forms from a soup of organic molecules. They know they would not survive long enough in stasis, and so they opted for another solution. One way around the problem, I guess. I don't know, I keep thinking back to Mass Effect 2 and everyone being turned into goo. Quite ingenious, really, though a rather extreme measure to take. On, on the plus side, each individual created can be assured perfect health and fitness with a body tailored to the needs of their vocation. This brings up scores of possibilities, few of which are pleasant. In fairness, okay. Captain, we can make no assumptions of any sort regarding their social structure, beings at this level of sophistication would have little need of manual labor or personal servants. Regardless, doesn't change while we're here, one way or the other. Doesn't change our mission. Then the bodies we saw in those chambers? They must be in the process of being activated. This ship is reviving, or perhaps I should say growing, a new crew even now. Process, process must have started when the Borg attacked. If they're being awakened in response to attack, they may not be thrilled to find a bunch of aliens wandering around their ship. Would you be? Let's get the lead out of here and make for the bridge. I'm well, afraid things get even more interesting. Don't, Don't they help. always? The med table I just scanned, look at these readings. It was just used. It's in an hour. With one of them is already awake, it seems. So one of these people is already out and about, probably on the bridge now, wondering what we're doing here. Well, let's go introduce ourselves then. It's only polite. Board swarms descending or no? No call to be rude. <laughs> that door should lead to the primary transit system. You can take a turbo lift to the bridge there. Advance, Let's to advance to the bridge! Dun 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 dun! Such an interesting four maps. Actually, five maps when you think about it. Because it's the exterior map and then the four interior maps. Yeah. So I just got a, an uh, interesting email, but anyway, that has nothing to do with Star Trek Online. <laughs> <laughs> I can say, how does that pertain to the foundry? <laughs> what this mission looks like? <laughs> oh. Did AJ Stoner find out we're playing it and then decide to email you suddenly? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, about, it's, a, it's uh, actually about uh, SimCity. They, they finally have an offline mode. Yeah, I heard about really? that. Really? Most excellent. About time. Most excellent. 
<laughs> Does that mean they're moving a little? That they're moving a little bit away from Origin with the uh, Sim City games, or where the or, or well, the no, Sid uh, Meier and, games or everything would still be Origin. It's just um, a different game mode. Okay. What are we standing inside? The bridge. No, I meant this round the, tube prop. Oh, it's the, These uh, are the Bajoran um, doors. doorways. Oh, but there, there's just like 20 of them stacked together? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Huh. He he makes incredible use of, on all, I think on all of these maps, really good use of what assets he puts on the map because he's got to be really... Uh, we have how many per map, and back then he may have had less. Yeah. <laughs> Captain. Well, here's our alien of the week. Welcome, travelers. Here's contact. Let, let's uh, say, please forgive our intrusion, because that's probably the best thing to say. Yes. Sure. Agreed. Not at all. In fact, you have been of great assistance. The Wandering One will be ready to travel much sooner thanks to your intervention. You feel yourself becoming dizzy. Ah, crap. <laughs> Forgive me. I see my telepathy is somewhat overwhelming. I can speak as well if it is more agreeable. My name is Unvol. So Vol will suffice. I am your counterpart on this principle, responsible for its safety and function. Greetings, all. It is a pleasure to meet you. I assure you, the pleasure is entirely mine. This is a rare opportunity for a member of my species. Like you, we are travelers. However, where you great journey to explore, ours is to endure. You have been observing us as well, then. In a sense, my species is fully telepathic. I have been in contact with your mind since you arrived. I understand that there are ethical concerns among your Federation constituent races regarding memory reading, as you call it. Please understand that this is not consciously controlled among my kind. No intrusion or offense is intended. I see your people are, in fact, a great many peoples, all working together without coercion. This is most gratifying and encouraging. Not all. If there's been any intrusion, it is on our part. How many of you are there on board? At the moment, only myself. Another 120 are being summoned now. The Wandering One will need our care and guidance. He has suffered serious wounds. The Wandering One, is that your ship? Our ship, yes. Though I think of her as our home. He is constructed from the metal, stone, clay, and soil of our birthplace. We abandoned our home many ages ago. A dead star wandered into our solar system and consumed it forcing us to take flight. The Wandering One is all that remains of our planet, lost so long ago now. But I can still see it in my mind's eye. You were there, personally? Oh yes, all of Drake Van Nee were there. Now that these forms of, not in these forms of course, but all of our minds were present in the Elder Time, Forgive me, but our sensors indicate this ship is nearly half a million years old. That is roughly accurate. I, I should explain, perhaps. Our thoughts, our memories, and experiences are all remembered in the, by the Wandering One. When she requires our assistance, she gives us form and imbues them with our past lives. I have lived 287 lives, more than any of my people. This is because, as the leader, I am aw always awakened first. The attack by the Borg started the process, I assume. The Borg, yes. A tragic people. Made into the 
substituted into things and enslaved by their own misguided hunger for perfection. And the collective began with such a noble aspiration. You have a history with the Borg, then. We encountered and observed them early in their development. The collective was not originally conceived as the monstrosity that it has become. The intent of its creators was to unite their people and end strife. It worked only too well. How long have they been chasing you? They discovered the Wandering One some two months ago, as you would count it. He was forced to battle seven of the Borg's tactical shoots without the benefit of our aid, and was badly hurt. We see the Wandering One is capable of repairing herself. She can accomplish much by her on her own, and the Borg are rather primitive, but her subspace drive was damaged and she requires our aid. Subsequently, a team been, subsequently, a team been summoned early and with haste. Rushing the maturation process has serious consequences, though she would not have done so without need. What kind of consequences? Given the speed of our summons, those of us being awakened only live for a few weeks. Some lives are long and some are short. It is the way of things. I am sorry to hear that, Fall. That is kind of you, but unnecessary. I will live again when the Wandering One has needed to call on me. Your steps in this matter... Your step into the matter transporters on... You step onto the matter transporters on a regular basis. It is that really you that appears on the other end, or just a copy that can't tell the difference. I need to take more shuttles. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that is clever. You I remember that sad one episode with Riker and Riker. <laughs> yeah. Humor is something sadly lost at our level of mental development. At least as you would understand it. It is, this is truly exhilarating encounter for me. For us as well, Val. Then I am pleased. Now, since you are here and you are determined to help, would you assist me in bringing the navigation controls online? We are happy to help. You are most generous, Captain. The Borg know we are here and will be sending reinforcements presently. Once the others are awakened, we will be able to fully repair the subspace drive quickly. But at least one more short jump will be needed to acquire the time we need. What do you need us to do? The first thing is to restore the bridge to full power and give priority to the navigation system. You will find the power control stations up the ramp behind me. I'm on it. Hey, Dragoon, um, I'm on it. <laughs> run around, uh, or rather have a look around so that people can get a look at the bridge and what he built here out of different assets of different things. Kirk Fat mentioned it to Rogue in the chat room, and I said I'd oh, okay. mention yeah, it to you because you're the camera. He has here. You know, you're the yeah. camera to have a Let's look around. Let's finish up this dialogue since it's here. <laughs> yeah. Nice. You will need to bring the system online here and then change the charge the navigational system's power infusers. There are two of these, one at each end of the catwalk, as you call it. Everything appears functional. We'll bring power online. Okay, so take a quick sec to look around. Yeah, like don't try, let's try not to pop anything. Let's give people and give him a chance to look around so people in the chat room see this bridge built out of, I'm counting, one, two, three, four, five different types of resources that I can just, out of the, out of here. my it's eye, I can see. Consoles for memory alpha. Uh-huh, so we've got it's science. The, you know, regular Federation console. I That's see yep. Cardassian console. I see and Klingon, Klingon. I see Klingon uh, generator pieces, and of course there's the walls, which are made out of Klingon stuff. Yep. Oh, that was like Klingon light. And the map itself, I think, is one of the Ooh, one also of the Federation for, stations. Uh, no, one it's one of the uh, generators. It's the uh, Klingon uh, outpost from um, the mission after 
exposing that Undine on. Yeah, I don't think I'm listening. Yeah. Post. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, the it's... listening post, yeah, it's the one where you uh, have to go and download the data and then run away again. And, yeah. and, and there, there are those uh, Bajoran doorway things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, those are sorry. a fun asset. Are we ready to begin the power-up cycle? Yep. And then it explodes. Boom. All right, so we're going to activate each of the users. All right, so cool. Because I need to push the button. You know what this mission reminds me of? Do you remember the uh, the TNG episode with Gom Two? In men. In. Yeah. All right. Set power distribution. Set the power distribution. We're so gonna die. Well, shaking. What asset is that? The getting the glowing orb. Uh, oh. It's probably the oh they've got a uh, a uh, energy ball inside. That's well, the, the ball energy the ball is out. actually a separate asset itself. Yeah, yeah. it's throwing uh -huh. up the bloom, and then it's the bloom is reacting with the uh, force field, and that's what's causing the purple glow. Oh, wow. wow! Excellent work, Captain. I need you to activate the port and starboard navigational arrays. You can activate the arrays from the console behind me. You can then activate the system from the main control station on the lower level. Check, Check bring navigation down. online. This bridge is really fun looking. Yeah. This is like a hot, this thing I'm standing here, the there's obviously some kind of like CNC console is just it's just a hologram console. Activate knob. Uh, darn it, Baz. Stab you for getting here before me. Thank ah, you, Captain. Ah. It will take some minutes for the system to complete its pre-flight test, but I believe all is in hand, as they say. I must say, your spoken language is quite delightful. Confusing and imprecise, but also full of wonderful possibilities <laughs> and room for such wonderful creativity. I am especially intrigued by this art form known as poetry. The noble attempt to make your words say more than the sum of their parts. There is a powerful yearning in the thought, a noble struggle. There is one in particular, Witsith, it is called, which entered your mind when you first arrived in the system. It seemed appropriate. Indeed, very much so. It really shows that we creatures of Mother Night are far more alike than different, despite our wondrous variety. It is both beautiful and sad. Mask of the Daka Nabani. Of course. When your star system was destroyed, why don't you relocate to a new one? There was much debate about that at first. Of course, you must understand that we were much less advanced at the time the Great Journey began. Our people had only just developed warp drive, as you call it. We have made refinements to our home over the years, and, ha and as we learned more about Mother Night and her secrets. Mother Night? The Great <sighs> Endless Multiverse. It has been personified in this way by my people since the time of caves. To me, the most amazing fact ever I ever learned was, as a small child, discovering that the molecules of our forms and those of our worlds had common origins in the crucibles of great stars. We are all made of stardust, in the most literal sense, all of us children of Mother Night. I see. So in a sense, you did not lose your home, so much as found it by going to the stars. Indeed. Of this, oh, this is very exciting. You are kindred spirits, my friend. Captain, your people are attempting to contact you. I sense a growing agitation aboard your ship. The wandering one's hull seems to interfere with our communications. Yes, of course. You may use the communication station at the front of the bridge on the left. 
Hello to the main viewer. Thank you. I have no idea what the prop is we're interacting with. I think it's an uh, invisible volume. Yeah, it would have to be invisible object not to um, Yeah, or, 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 or it uh, could be the old martini glass under the floor trick. It might uh, be... That, that could have stuff to it. This, yeah, mission, but... this mission is pretty old. He might have had to resort to that. <laughs> but it's probably an invisible. Yeah. Ship to away team, please respond. This is the captain. We're all safe. Very glad to hear it, Captain, and none too soon. We have a situation out here. Report. The Klingon battle group is approaching at high warp. They'll be on our position in 20 minutes. Understood. Stand by. Bull? You may return to your ship at any time, Captain. I thank you, on behalf of my people, for your unselfish assistance. On a personal note, I wish to thank you for your, this most wonderful opportunity. Rarely has a member of my species interacted with another race since the great voyage began. Though this existence may be brief, it has resulted in something new and unique to be passed on down to those that follow. Thank you, Vol. We'll buy you the time you need. I hope it does not prove an expensive task or expensive purchase. Oh. I like the second option. in the bowl. I like the second option personally. I'll worry about the Klingons. You get your people to safety. Yeah, that's yeah. what my tech definitely say. Yeah. Me too. And Dragon Duel Bay team, ready to transport. Energize. Get out of here. 14. Let's get out of here and, and defend these people. I have a pink ship that makes pink trails and it's ready to make <laughs> mayhem. <laughs> Does it have pink weapons too? Yes. Perfect. It actually, it actually does. I, just, I haven't redone that mission often enough to get the really, really pink ones. Um, but uh, yeah, Miranda's Miranda ship fires uh, Polarons, phased Polarons. So they're as pink or purple as you can get with the game. Um, unless I were to do pursue the doing, what's the mission where you walk across Deep Space Nine? Boldly They oh, Rode. Boldly they rode. Yeah, you can do, if, if I wanted to do Boldly They Rode a bunch of times, I could get her slightly pinker colored weapons. I nah. That was pinkest. Yeah, nah. <laughs> Not that important. It's really not Have that you important. Seen Malachi's ship in action? Because What's that? What? Have you seen Malachi's ship in action? Because no. I actually did a, a dedicated rainbow setup on that ship. Oh, I've done oh, that. Crap. I did that once upon, once upon a time. I made up a character called uh, called Hippie, and I I gave him every color of the rainbow except for red. I couldn't afford it. It's time. <laughs> well, this uh, is it. Welcome back, Captains. What's our status? Klingon battleship, the Klang, with two Vorchai escorts waiting on station. The group's commander insists upon speaking to you. The Spartacus, Tavor, and Hypatia have joined us from Task Force Omega, and both are standing by. They are on yellow alert, and as are we, and I've ordered them to maintain position. The tug craft we requested were on route, but I've ordered them to hold back until the Klingon issue is resolved. Oh. Approach the Klang. <laughs> Two P's in approach. Okay, yeah, so, there are, so there are how some many snow ships do you think are going to spawn when we do this? A bunch. But they're Klingons. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be that terrible. I mean, it won't be that great, but... Look at how many USS Spartacuses there are over there. <laughs> I mean, and how many Tavors. There's going to be a lot of ships. It's going to be a big fight. <laughs> yeah. Be, oh, there's the clangs. How many oh, clangs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two clangs. Two clangs. On screen clang. There's yeah, like, well, like seven gorches and, and six of the Jinol Jin. 
Nice. I love Another when, I mean, this is just reacting to five people playing, and it wouldn't happen if one person were playing And now it. it's making me hungry for Chinese food. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the clang is hailing us. I am Captain Mortok of the Imperial Red Talon Strike Fleet. Am I speaking to you? You, <laughs> <laughs> you are a pleasure, Captain Mortok. How can we help you? Or... Help. Both me and yourself by cooperating fully. We know about this vessel, its recent encounters with the Borg, and what it will mean if they capture it. Look, ship's crew is being revived now. They need to make one more jump and they will be safely away. What do you propose? Help me protect the ship until it can jump to safety. They've tracked her down before. What if there are no good Samaritans there at the next encounter with the Borg? Once their main drive is fully repaired, she will be beyond their Borg's reaches for good. Captain, Captain we're, de Go we're detecting transport signatures entering the system. Captain? It seems the Borg have made this decision for me. Kapla! Kapla! <laughs> oh crap! <laughs> ah! <laughs> That's so You were worried about duplicate clangs. Clang. That. Wow, that's a lot of Borg. Awesome. Reacting to five of us. They're gonna go up like, yeah, they're going up like... <laughs> like fireworks. Yeah. By the way, if any of you feel your shield failing, get close to me. I've got my uh, shield emitters on. I, <laughs> I'm still trying to target something. Oh, <laughs> already. Oh, everything was just blown up so fast. Target destroyed. I got one the, shot off. The Tybor and the Hapashi are reporting a second group converging on their position. Bring us well, in. Then let's get to their position. Which is way back at the ship. Not. Oh, good tactical cubes. Oh yeah. That makes me pleased, actually. I was gonna say, the last group almost made me think about breaking a sweat. <laughs> hey, it did live long enough for me to shoot at it once or twice. My mines <laughs> actually worked, and so did my, uh... my special Corvetti power, so all is happy in my universe. Like the fleet. Miranda got to do her special thing once during the mission. Oh, Ooh, oh, uh, oh mother of god. More. <laughs> oh crap, more board. I did not uh, the best life is spice picking challenges I missed before. Let's see if I can get a chain warp for breach going here. Anyone got gravity well? Uh, yeah, I, I already can. No, you don't get to carry gravity while well on a ship that has exactly one Ensign Science spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm flying the I just so realized the ridiculousness of flying the ship, but man, it's so much fun. Yeah, I've only got an Ensign um, Science as well. I, I don't uh, have that problem. I've been flying a Nebula. I blow it up. And sustain damage. Nice. How do you sustain damage on normal? Because the universe hates Miranda Mayhem. Actually, I, I, I saw happen. that happen in, in one of my uh, mirror in, invasion runs. I, I got an injury on my ship, even though, as far as I knew, I was playing normal. You know, that's the last of them. Sensors showing all clear. Wait, Captain, I'm showing a massive power spike aboard the alien vessel. I think she's powering up the subspace drive. Get, get us clear, clear now. Them now. Let's get out of here. Hey! Oh! Oh! No. Let's go! Does run get away! Back. Run away! Run Does away! Get caught in what? Why did we run away? We yeah, don't get want away to be from sucked the in. subspace. Ah, uh, yeah, we don't want to get sucked into subspace. That yeah, we suck. might run it. We might get our organs dissected again. Oh. <laughs> Oh mm -hmm. no! Organ dissection. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, well, no. well, you remember what happened to Riker, right? 
Now, you remember what happened to Sean? <laughs> yeah. Actually, that was pretty much the same thing that happened to Riker. It yeah, was the bad, same. And bad stuff happened to somebody that wasn't us. Good enough. Well, in, in, in the case of Sean, <laughs> it was actually slightly worse because they apparently cut off one of his antennas and reattached that, too. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Poor there was, Sean. There was actually a good TNG recut where they were making fun of that, and the aliens took something else of Riker's. <laughs> He's a joystick. <laughs> we're not going to talk about here, right? <laughs> yeah, we're not going to talk about it. But just to know it can get worse. <laughs> the alien vessel is gone, Captain. I'm showing some residual effects of the subspace distortion, but they are abating. The Klingons. Gone as well. I can still detect their warp signatures. They left the system under their own power. I think it's an absence, you Captain Mortok. Orders. Here's to the epicenter of the distortion, and we'll have a look around before we head out. Force laid in. We'll pass through the mild shockwave as we approach the epicenter of the distortion. Full impulse. Hey. Mm. Full impulse. I don't remember these asteroids being here before. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, that's a wild self life. It's called epilogue. Whoa, there's sparkly things. This is the radiation effect that we'd normally never find any figure out a use for. <laughs> The rupture has sealed. There's no sign of the alien vessel or any more Borg. Tell me, does it seem strange to anyone else how easily we operated the equipment on that ship? Yes, with technology that event, it's a wonder we didn't blow ourselves to bits, really. But it seemed so effortless at the time. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, yeah, like the alien was making us do it telepathically. Yeah, I just thought to remark on it more than once, in fact, but I just got I caught, got up, in caught up in what you were doing. Yes, exactly. Same here. I'm glad he was friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever they, wherever they went, I wish them well. It's not likely we could come to their aid again. I can't even begin to guess how we might even be able to track. Perhaps that's for the best. And it's done. Well, I thought My that was thoughts a great on the overall story here is that. Um, um, well, the, the race can come across as a very tragic culture, not just because they uh, had their home world get blown up, but because they don't really live. They're no. stored in the computer until the computer needs they do them come to a, do They do come across labor. to me as a very tragic culture. Um... They, you're, yeah, that, that's an amazing way to put it, Mark. I don't know, yeah. it really depends on what your goals in life are. I mean, or, it's not like, you know, your lack thereof. Well, and that's the I thing like, also... I like the note, I like the note by your bridge officer. We have no way to relate to how their social structure works. We, we encounter them for 15 minutes of game time. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we it, don't yeah, have... It, it, we have no way. When, when, when you're just a cog in the machine. Oh, uh, yeah. Okie dokie. Well, I think that is uh, probably uh, mm -hmm. enough to wrap up this uh, marathon. Special, yeah. special weekend marathon. We played one mm. of. Uh, uh, we played one of every uh, faction. Yep, one yeah. of every faction, including Romulans. Gary. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I mean, it's almost ten o'clock here, and I could. Use oh, I'm. I, I, <laughs> it's almost eight o'clock here, and I've got a couple more things I need to do before the end of the night. Um, I, I, I had. I'm. I'm. 
I am glad that we had viewers that wanted to celebrate the foundry with us today. Um, I am glad that I had co-hosts that wanted to come and play some foundry missions and, um, you know, and celebrate the foundry, which is the part of the game that I love the most. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, regardless of anything else that ever goes, like, I love the foundry. I, I Ooh, do. 90 marks for that. 90 marks for that. Really? Sweet. That's, wonderful. That's a really wonderful, wonderful thing, in my opinion. <laughs> um, you know, and it's it, it, we may not have gotten the most marks in the world, you know, for our oh, foundry had... bonus weekend this weekend, but we got enough. Yeah, we, we had got fun enough. doing it. And we had fun doing it. That's the most important thing. Like, that's really right. fun. Yeah. Fun. It's, it's amazing how much that gets lost on people. Yeah. When 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 I when I do read the forums and and one of the responses I saw to people talking about the Foundry bonus weekend was this guy who responded. I I don't even remember his name, but he responded something to the effect of like, you know, I don't have time to spend enjoying myself playing this game. And I would be like, like he had like a whole other tirade about like how, you know, he had to do this and had to do that and had to grind this and grind that for his fleet and for his reputation and everything else. And, and you sit there, you read it and you're like, wait a sec. And I Why went and I went other. It all comes back. I was like, it all comes down to the first line of your, of your, of what you just said is, I don't have time to enjoy the game that I'm playing. For me, at least forever in my life, when I play a game, I'm playing it to enjoy myself. I'm playing it to spend time with friends whose company that I enjoy like we did today. Um, I'm not playing it to grind something. You know, I'm, I'm playing it for fun. And if what I'm doing has become not fun, I need to stop doing it. You know, yeah. I... It, yeah. And and people like that, I feel really bad for that. That's the only way that their mind can view something that is called a game. I mean, it's not going anywhere as a free-to-play thing. It's not going anywhere. You have forever to get all of the stuff um, that you want. You know, hey, yes, um, someday, but you have forever. 